Merry Christmas guys, welcome back to another video. I hear it's winter time, but it's actually 64 degrees outside, so it doesn't really feel like winter at all. But business in the shop, definitely winter business. So today's video is pretty much the only thing, it's the highlight of the week for me. It's dressed up road glide, came from the sales floor. We've just been putting parts on it, making it cooler and cooler as the weeks go on with no business in the service department. But it is pretty cool and it's a great way to showcase the stage two speakers. So today we are going to listen to stock speakers, stage one speakers and stage two speakers. Uh, it's a long video. So I threw in a bunch of extra information for you on just tips on installing anything with a wire harness and taking a road glide fair. It's coming up right now, but let's go to the sales floor and compare other speakers of stock speakers. You want to be Stage one, but it doesn't have an amp. So that's that. I don't want any copyright strikes, so let's go. Wait, I haven't even properly introduced myself. My name is John Maxwell, and I'm a highly trained professional right here at Chattahoochee Harley Davidson. So if you're into all things Harley Davidson, you should hit the subscribe button right now. It's down there, along with my Instagram and Facebook if you want to follow me there. We do all sorts of Harley videos, teach you stuff, show you new models, all kind of stuff like that. So now the introduction's out of the way, we can go get some parts and start installing the stage two speakers on this Rogue Glide. Amplifier kit and harness. Stage two speakers for a Rogue Glide. So we only install Harley stereo stuff here, none of the aftermarket stuff. And some of them do sound good, but by the time you factor in all the stuff, it's not actually cheaper. And a lot of times people aren't all that satisfied with them. So it's been easier just to recommend this. Any warranty concerns we can take care of in shop, not having the customer track down which internet company they bought it from and all that stuff. So. It's easier that way. But anyway, I'll uh, get this road glide tan part. We'll just speed it up a little bit. And I'll give you a couple tips though on ways to do all this stuff. So, all right, so now that we got that part off, we gotta take the tank off to route the harness back to the battery so this amp can get some power. Onward. All right, super tech tip. When you're taking the tank off, you would think you have to remove this guy because, well, it's got a bunch of connections underneath it. The fuel pump's plugged in there. There's a vent line, all that stuff. But you can actually do it like this. Pull this guy up. Sometimes you gotta cut this zip tie that you can't barely see anyway, right there. Probably have to replace it later anyway, but whatever. Disconnect this guy. All right, I can't do it holding the camera, but disconnect that guy. Now everything that was holding this tank together, or holding it to the bike, is done. Loosen up my hardware, pull the tank off. Depending on how much you want to struggle, you might want to empty the fuel, um, but whatever. And don't forget this part. This guy right here will definitely break if you don't disconnect it. Is that your tech tip for the day? Don't drop the bolts. Don't drop the bolts. Right, cool. The biggest thing I, I have uh, That is learned. probably more important than anything I'm telling you guys. Don't drop the bolts. The 
totally apart, battery disconnected. Let's look at what we're installing today. And get away from me. <laughs> it's impossible to film anything in this place. It's like working with children. It's exactly like working with children. Anyway, so we'll check all this stuff out. Oh, you know what? I didn't pull the speakers out. This is what we're installing today. Four channel amplifier. 75 watts per channel, 300 watts total. And it powers the front two fairing speakers. For every pair of speakers, stage two style, you need one amp. The reason being, the lows here, the mids here, and the highs here, each takes two channels. Four channels, one amp. Harness. Another harness. This this harness comes with a speaker kit. This is the speaker kit. Everything else is in the amplifier and wiring harness kit. So they sell it all crazy. It's kind of hard to keep track of what's what. But there's a pretty good matrix in the PA book. You got a PA book? Let me know in the comments below. They're free. Get one. <laughs> yeah, what that guy said. Yeah. All right, the amp install is made considerably easier if you remove the two vents. Here and here. Because, well, you got to be able to get in there. So let's get rid of those first. But obviously, these are side specific. They're even molded in there. It's the right hand one. Only two scrolls. The only two screws hold them in place, but they do have some locating little tabs inside the interfering that some of these circles kind of slide into. So just remember that when you're putting it back together again. Amplifier is going to go in there. The reason we took those two vents out is because all the mounting holes on these brackets that I've already installed, you got to get to them from basically where the vent is at. So. Get those out of the way, makes it a whole lot easier for these guys. And a rationing wrench and you're on, ready to go. Don't tighten everything up, get it all started first. Now I'm going to install the harness. The reason why we do the amp and the harness first before the speakers is at some point we got to reflash this radio. Now that's something that you guys can't do at home. It has to be done at the dealer. But if you plug in the speakers and have everything hooked up and turn that radio on, the EQ that's in the amp, which is set by the computer, it will definitely blow the speakers. I've witnessed it time and time again. So depending on... So depending on how this install is going to go for you, you might have to take a break and get into the dealership with the speaker still unplugged, not even installed, however you want to do it before proceeding with a speaker install. Anyway, because of the size of all these connectors, there's a specific way to do this. We're going to start with the battery leads because that's the smallest connectors on here and it fits through all these little channels we're about to utilize. You just want to be careful not to drag everything across the floor while you're doing this. All right, I always start down at the battery because I've got places to hide extra wire up in the fairing, but it's, and it's a lot easier to make it happen up there than down here underneath the seat. Now the fuse to the amp is not plugged in right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything because it doesn't have power anyway. I'll come back later, plug it in before we do this amp flash that we gotta do. I 
but if it's already connected, I don't know how much of this harness I need up here up front and I can get everything else tidied up and zip tied along the way to where I'm going. Anytime you're reconnecting a battery, make sure you do positive first. See how I went underneath right here? All this, all these wires? It's because when I do batteries, I'm going to want to move this. I always try to make my harnesses routed as kind of factory looking as possible. I'm going to be able to plug this main fuse in later and tuck it up here. You can't really tell that it's even here. We'll start zip tying stuff and put this wire trough back on. We'll tidy up the battery compartment later. We still got a bunch of other stuff to do, but we do have the battery harness set up. From battery through here, pop out here. Let me help you out with some light. See this where the main harness runs? I just run it right through there. I'll add some zip ties to that set up in a little bit once I officially tidy everything up, but I do want to bring up that the little metal connector ends on there, you gotta be really careful with those. You don't want them sliding across painted parts, the inner fairing, the front fender, the engine guard, all that stuff. You wanna be really careful during that whole process. So start cleaning up the fairing and get some speakers installed. With everything routed, I can get ready to set the EQ on this amp. I'll show you how everything's routed though. All right, these are gonna be speaker connectors, but I'm gonna leave them disconnected for now. Same with this side over here. Ah, there we go. So all that's routed there. I have, there's a PNA power port. It was right up here, routed it down here. I'm gonna need that later for speakers as well. Connector 313 in your instructions. Now everything comes through here. That's my headlight connector. Get it out of the way. Everything comes out and kind of routes around all over the place right through here because the headlight still has to go in there. So don't cover everything like It'll be redoing stuff if you route it wrong, but you know, if you're doing it yourself and not paying somebody, it can take you as long as you want it to take. All right, I have all the powers hooked up to the amp. Got that fuse replaced. There's two power. There's straight to battery power and there's switched power. That connector I moved from above the fairing bracket, that switch power on this bike. Also have the CAN bus system plugged in so that the amp can communicate with the computer and the radio and the speedometer and everything else because that's how Harley does things. Everything's got to be connected and communicate with each other. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, with all that plugged in, I can reflash and then we can keep going with actually putting the speakers in and we can hear them. I'll say though, don't forget to plug the speakers in. I know a guy one time on such a roll that he just bolted the speakers up and never even plugged them into the wiring that's within that speaker box. 
don't be that guy, whoever, whoever that might be. I get a lot of crap all the time about using power tools on everything, but I don't actually use power tools on everything. These long wood screw type with plastic backed stuff, don't use power tools on that. You will regret it. All right, this sticker over the connector is telling you not to connect the speakers before you've set the EQ on the amp. But you guys already know that because I told you. Now, what I haven't told you though, is one of the mounting screws for the fairing is behind this. So while you can put it in there and get it all plugged in, don't snap it into place yet because you're gonna have to move it out of the way later. All right, these are the connections I'm talking about right here. Some of this is from the grill, some of it's from the tweeter itself. So just get all that hooked in, but don't snap in your grill yet because you got a mounting screw back there. All right, everything is connected and routed right, but I don't zip tie this stuff. Because I still have to move these grills around. So if I zip tie them, then the wires will get all tight or maybe in the way of the grill. Since those blue wires can be seen through the grill, you don't want them all poking out everywhere. It'd look gross. Hardly worth $85 an hour, you know what I mean? Maybe in six years I can get this one. If you're lucky, that was the wrong screw. Just goofed. So I'm gonna tell you guys, I mean, not a big goof. You got two long screws like this. You got four little screws like this. Little screws go in the headlight, long screws go in the turn signal. Don't forget to reconnect your fuel. I do it pretty much every single time I take a tank off and then put a tank back on. And then I just look like an idiot when I'm trying to start the bike. Oh well. John, you always look like an idiot. Thanks, Travis. Now when you tighten this windshield down, I just line up the windshield to the rubber piece, make sure that's all straight, and gently tighten down these screws. Don't tie them down so much that the windshield gets all wavy and stupid looking. That's no good. It's like, I don't know, I see it all the time. Probably know it's other technicians though. Might not even be customers, but either way it looks bad. Outside edge in. Clip that guy in there. Uh, drop your speaker in. Outside in first. Then it just clips in. There's no wires that you can see through here, so all that worked out great. Real quick, we'll check out what the other bikes sounded like, both the stock and the Stage 1 speakers. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm not real good at editing audio. Oh, okay, yeah, you guys know that. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Anyway, I haven't touched the audio. Uh, the camera's been on the same setting the whole time. The radio is set to five, five little ticks on the volume control and that's the best comparison I could think of so let's listen to those other ones and every time you told me my and we'll listen to this one I wish I had the same song to play but I don't so whatever comes on the radio Alright, here's a good comparison. I can't even stand as close to the motorcycle without my audio meters on this camera peaking. So, I'm this far away right now, and I'll walk up close, and I'll stop where the meter was going on the other songs on the other bikes. Alright, I was right up on those other bikes for the meter to be right there. Now, I probably just cut this up a little bit because of copyright. 
so you know short little segments they might not hit me on it but anyway stage two speaker install there you have it um, hopefully y'all enjoyed the extra little tips that should apply for anybody it doesn't have to be this job you know the tips on the windshield the road glide fairing alignment all that stuff that's for everybody so if you enjoyed this video give it a big dirty thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you follow me on Facebook, you already know about this bike and me putting the handlebars on it and all that good stuff. So hit me up on there too. And thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.